Hello, it's Simon Schultz here. I'm going to be doing some PMT physics and MassDuty.com A-level physics questions. This is AQA, but these questions are good no matter what board you're doing. Link to where you can download these questions is in the description. Let's go. Question one, we have an EMF 12 volts, an internal resistance that is not negligible. Okay, so this is an EMF and internal resistance question. If it's not, then it'll just say with negligible internal resistance, we can ignore it. But there is going to be an internal resistance in here. So I'm just going to pop a little R in there. Okay, when the resistance of the variable resistor is 10 ohms, the voltmeter reads 10 volts. Okay, and the ammeter reads one amp. All right, the resistance of the variable resistor is changed to five ohms. And oh, okay, we're just being asked what is the new reading on the ammeter. Okay, so let's figure out what's going on. So we know that EMF is equal to well, V plus IR. Now I could have written big I, big R, but because I have 10 volts, that's my terminal PD, I don't need that. So terminal PD, I think we'd be giving actually too much information here, which is kind of nice. So we know that the EMF is equal to 12 volts. So 12 volts is equal to 10 volts, which is our terminal PD, plus, well, one times R. And so I'm just gonna say R there. So therefore we can see that R is equal to 12 take away 10, so that is two ohms. Cool, so we have the internal resistance. Now what we have to do is do the equation again to find out what the current would be if the big resistance, if the load resistance is changed to five, so I'm just gonna write it out again, but this time we're gonna say epsilon EMF is equal to IR plus I little r. Of course I can factorize that, can't I? So I R plus R, Again, this is just Ohm's law, V equals IR, but R being the total R in this case. I'm looking for I, so I'm just gonna move that to the other side like that. So therefore, the new current is gonna be equal to 12 volts. That hasn't changed, that's the EMF, that doesn't change. Over, what was it, uh, five plus two. So it's gonna be 12 over seven. And that gives us 1.7. So the answer is B. Question two, we have current in a wire. Okay, this is gonna be Kirchhoff's first law. So going in there, going in there, out there, in there, in there, just to make it a bit easy for me to see, I think. So I'm getting old. What is the magnitude of the current at X? Okay, so we're gonna start at the right here, aren't we? So three going in and one going in, so four going out. So actually there is gonna be zero amps going along here because one, three, and then four coming out. So therefore there can't be any more current coming out. So. Therefore, we can just forget about that whole thing. So two amps going in here, four amps going in here. So there must be six amps going to the left through X. So the answer is D. Three, we have resistors R, R and three R. What's the resistance of the arrangement? Okay, so we're gonna use one over R total is equal to, well, one over R plus one over R and plus one over three R. But we need a common denominator. So we're gonna say three over 3R plus 3 over 3R plus 1 over 3R. Adding those together, we end up with 7 over 3R. But of course, that's 1 over R total. Also flipping the whole thing, we end up with R total is equal to 3R over 7. So the answer is A. Four, we have a current voltage graph for two components. Okay, guaranteed they're gonna be in series, aren't they? Two com oh, parallel, I was wrong, okay. So there we go. We know one of these is a resistor and one of these is a lamp, don't we? Because one's straight and then one is, uh, one is curvy. Okay, so 12 volt battery. So therefore they're going to have 12 volts each, aren't they? No internal resistance as well. So therefore we're going right the way up to the top here. So therefore the current through the lamp is gonna be nine milliamps and then through the resistor is gonna be 14 milliamps. What are we being asked? What's the current in the battery? Nice, nice and easy. So nine plus 14, it's gonna be 23. Five measurements are taken to determine resistivity. Okay, so we're dealing with rho. Okay, oh, percentage uncertainties, nice. So let's get out our resistivity equation. Rho is equal to R A over L. So, oh, we have the diameter though, don't we? So therefore we're going to say, well, actually we don't need equal. We can just go with proportional. So 
because we know that area is equal to pi d squared over 4, we can say that area is proportional to d squared. So therefore, I'm going to say r d squared over l. That's fair enough. All I've done is turn it into a proportionality equation. But actually, uh, well, we've got current and PD. So therefore, we're going to have to say that R is equal to V over I according to Ohm's law. So therefore, rho is proportional to V over I times by D squared over L. Or in other words, just popping those together, V D squared over I L. OK, so now we have to combine all of these percentage uncertainties to find out what the overall percentage uncertainty is. So for the PD at 0.3%, and for the diameter, it's 4%, but that's going to be times by 2 because it's d squared. So uh, I'm just going to say that's 8%. I is 5%, and then L is 0.2%. So our overall percentage uncertainty is equal to, uh, let's go with the biggest first, 8 plus 5 plus 0.3 plus 0.2. So I think that's going to give us 13.5%. So I think the answer is C. Nice practical skills question there. Superconductors are used to A, increase the strength of electricity cables. No, we know they have no resistance, right? Make light dependent resistance. No, produce strong magnetic fields. Yes, because there's no resistance. So therefore the current is huge. So therefore we have a super strong magnetic field because we know the bigger the current, the stronger the magnetic field. Increase the rate of heat energy transfer. No, that's going to be something with a high resistance, isn't it? Seven, we have an EMF of 4.2. Uh, okay, and no internal resistance, nice. So what are the reasons on the voltmeter when the switch is open, off, and when the switch is closed, on? Okay, ooh, this looks complicated, doesn't it? Okay, let's go with closed first, shall we? Because that's a little bit easier, me thinks. So when it's closed like that, uh, this voltmeter is just across this 10 ohm resistor. And so we know these together are going to make 20 ohms. So therefore, uh, it's just going to be a ratio of 10 to 20 or 1 to 2. So in other words, it's going to be 4.2 times by a third, isn't it? Yeah, you can do your fancy equation if you want to, but I, we know it's going to be 10 divided by 30, isn't it? So that's going to be uh, 1.4 volts. So therefore, it can't be A, can't be B. Uh, what about when it's open though? Well, when it's open, this is taken out of the equation. So actually, because there's no current flowing, it's essentially the same as just putting the voltmeter across here. Because there's no current flowing through the resistors, because of course the voltmeter has a seriously high resistance, then that means that the potential here is going to be zero volts. So therefore, it's going to be zero volts here, zero volts here, and zero volts here, zero volts here. In other words, there's no PD being supplied or lost in the resistors. So the PD here is going to be just 4.2 volts. But that's not a super easy one to get because it's a bit of a weirdly drawn diagram. Eight, two resistors are connected in series. EMF of 30 volts, negligible, okay. So, okay, same length. And uh, Okay, so we have a different diameter. So we're looking at resistivity. So tell you what, let's write it out in the other version. R is equal to rho L over A. What's staying the same? Well, rho is staying the same, same material there, of course. And L is staying the same, so therefore we can say R is inversely proportional to A, but we're dealing with diameter. So therefore, much like earlier, R is inversely proportional to D squared. So we know that D is doubling for Y, so therefore this multiplies by four. So R goes down by a factor of four. So that means that if X has a resistance of one ohm, then that means that Y has a resistance of 0.25 ohms. So I guess uh, just relatively speaking, I'm just gonna say four ohms and one ohm. That's probably a little bit better there. Okay, what are we being asked? What's the reading on the voltmeter? Well, we have 30 volts then, and it's just a ratio, isn't it? So we just take 30 volts and we times it by R over R total, okay? So we know that uh, this is our V here. That's how we do it. It's just a ratio game, isn't it? Uh, four resistors in series. So that's going to be 30 times four divided by five. So that's going to be 24 volts. So I think the answer is Nine, we have, oh boy, okay. 
So we're going to have to like picture the graph in our heads. Fantastic. Which component is an ohmic conductor? Okay, so ohmic, of course, we know that we want just a straight line for I and V, so an IV graph. Uh, a, we can see that that's not going to be the case because it's staying at zero, so it can't be A, it's not ohmic. Uh, B, yes, 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 is going up by 0 0.3 every time, so that is ohmic. Constant gradient, constant resistance. Uh, looks like C is ohmic as well, yeah, it's going up by 0 0.4 each time. D... 0 0.3, 0 0.3, ah, no, look at that. So that doesn't work. So D is non-ohmic. So which one has the greatest resistance, though? Well, it's going to be the one with the lowest current, isn't it, at the same PD? And that's B. 10, which row shows the resistances of an ideal ammeter and voltmeter, ideal ammeter, zero, and voltmeter, infinite. We don't want any current going through a voltmeter, ideally and we don't want any PD being lost across an ammeter either. Okay, capacity of a portable charger, uh, so we have one amp hour, okay, right, right, right. One charger has a capacity of 1,800 milliamp hours at a working voltage of that. What's the energy stored in the charger? Okay, so therefore, we can find out how much charge is stored in this charger as it were so coulombs that is so charge is equal to current times time so that's equal to 1800 oh wait it's milliamps whoops so 1.8 amps times by well it's an hour but we need it in seconds so times by 3600 and uh, that gives us 6480 coulombs Seems like a lot. Uh, we're looking for energy, and we know that, well, voltage or PD is equal to energy divided by charge, so therefore energy is equal to charge times PD, so that is 6,480 times by 3.7. So I think it looks something like, uh, hang on a minute, why do we have 24 kilojoules twice? What's going on here? Uh-oh, guaranteed it's gonna be one of those then, right? Well, it better be anyway. Uh, yes, <laughs> and so that's gonna give us uh, this number here, joules, so therefore that is 24 kilojoules. So, hey, take your peg. Is it going to be B or D? Uh, let's go with the first one. Let's go with B. That's a bit weird. I'm not losing my mind. No, don't think I am. Moving on. 12 filament lamp. We have a resistance and we have an operating power. What can we do with that, of course? We can find out uh, the current, can't we? Because we know P is equal to I squared R. So we can find out the current from that. So therefore, I squared is equal to P over R. So therefore, I is equal to the square root of P over R, which is equal to the square root of 36 divided by 12. So in other words, it's equal to the square root of 3. Okay. Do you know what? I'm going to leave it like that for now. And then we know we're looking for the charge. So, of course, we know current is equal to charge divided by time. We're looking for charge. So, therefore, charge is equal to current times time. So, therefore, it's going to be equal to the square root of 3 times by 15 times by 60. And that gives us 1,559 coulombs, or in other words, 1.6 kilocoulombs. So, the answer is... 13, we have a temperature sensing circuit. I love these. We have a thermistor here down the bottom. Uh, temperature of the thermistor is decreased. So without even looking at what's going on, the temperature of the thermistor decreased. That means that the resistance increases. It does the opposite to a normal wire, doesn't it? So if its resistance increases, then therefore its share of the voltage is also going to increase. So there we go. So we know it can't be B and it can't be C. What's going to happen to the ammeter? Well, if the ammeter is recording the total current, then we know that it's going to be to do with the total resistance. We know that the total resistance has gone up, so therefore the total current goes down. So therefore the answer is D. 14, whoa, this looks complicated. Oh, hang on a minute, maybe not actually. Why are they doing this? 20 and 20, we know they combine to make 10 ohms, don't we? because if they're identical in parallel, it just hurts. Okay, what's the potential difference between P and Q? Uh, what? That's super easy then. So all of these are the same, so therefore, well, let's say this is six volts. So uh, this, the potential here would be six volts, and here, here it would be four volts, because 
we're losing two volts every time. So the potential here would be two volts. The potential here would be two volts. So therefore, if we put a voltmeter there, the potential difference is zero. So the answer is eight. What a weird question. 15 resistor of R is made, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what's the diameter of the wire? So we're looking for, uh, let's go with rho is equal to RA over L. Okay, uh, we know that area is equal to pi d squared over 4, if we're dealing with diameter, so pi d squared over 4 divided by L. Uh, we're looking for the diameter, so therefore we're going to rearrange this. So let's put everything else over the other side. So therefore d squared is equal to 4L rho. So I've just moved the 4 and the L over to the other side, and then divide by pi. Uh, and then, of course, we just square root it at the end. Uh, oh, but that can't be our answer because we don't have one with four in, so therefore we can take the four out. The square root of four is two, so therefore we can just stick the two outside. There we go. It looks like our answer is C. 16, we have three identical cells. Okay, what's the car? Oh, they have internal resistance. Ah, okay, fine. What's the current in the resistor? Ooh, so what's the equivalent resistance of these three going to be? So 1 over r total for these three is equal to, well, 1 over r times by 3. So in other words, 3 over r. So therefore, r total is equal to r over 3. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? It's just going to be a third like we saw earlier with resistors in parallel. We know the EMF is just going to be equal to one of them. So let's say that, well, actually, we can just use V equals IR, essentially, because that's all that the EMF equation is anyway. It's just saying that V is the EMF. So therefore, we can say that the, the V is just the EMF. I don't know why they haven't used epsilon, but there we go. We'll roll with it. Uh, so epsilon equals I times R total. It's not this R total up here, though, is it? Okay, this is the equivalent of R over 3, a third of R. Uh, so therefore, we know that the total resistance is just going to be, well, this R over 3 plus R. Okay. So therefore, oh, okay, okay. Now, ah, this is why they're trying to catch us out. So none of these answers look right. We know it's not going to be C. We know it's not going to be D. But look at this. We have 3E. E, so let's multiply the whole darn thing by 3. So therefore, 3E e is equal to... I, and then, well, if we multiply the bracket by 3, we just end up with R plus 3 big R. So therefore, rearranging this for current, we find that I is equal to 3E divided by R plus 3R. So the answer is A. That's a really mean question. 17, we have this circuit. Okay. When the switch is closed, the reading becomes V over 3. What is the internal resistance of the cell? Okay, so... Epsilon, EMF is equal to, I'm just going to say V plus I R. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, no, I should rewrite it as Epsilon equals I R plus I R, shouldn't I? There we go. So, therefore, let's just think about this here. We can say that V equals I R, but in that case, it's V over 3 is equal to uh, two lots of the current. Is that fair enough? So we don't have a value for V, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky. But that's okay, we can just deal with it algebraically. So therefore, we can say that the current is equal to, divide the whole thing by two, we end up with V over six. So I is equal to V over six. Okay, so that's true once we've closed it. So therefore, let's pop that back into there, shall we? So we can say... Let's write it out again here. Epsilon is equal to V plus I R. But then I need to change it, don't I? So that becomes just V. And V becomes V over 3. And then I is V over 6 times by R. Okay. And then basically we can just, uh, you know, divide the whole thing by V. So we just end up with 1 is equal to a third plus r over 6 and so therefore taking the third over the other side we can say r over 6 is equal to 2 thirds so therefore r is equal to 6 times 2 thirds and so that is equal to 4 ohms might be a slightly easier way of doing that but 
we were dealing with the EMF equation. We didn't have a value, but that was fine because the V's cancelled out in the end. So we just went along with it and it all came out in the wash. 18, what's the current voltage characteristic for a filament lamp up to its working voltage? Uh, well, well, we know this, don't we? So we know that it's B, isn't it? Can't be A because that implies that it's ohmic. D, well, that's just weird. We never really see that. I mean, that would be the case if the axis was in the middle there, wouldn't it? But uh, it's not zeros down here. C, no, there's nothing really that does that, I guess. No, not really. Thermistors? I don't know. Whatever. So, yeah, the answer is B. Easy. 19, three identical. Okay, similar to last time. Oh, we got this internal resistance again of six ohms. So like we said, we saw that the equivalent resistance of this, so the overall internal resistance is equal to, well, it was, I'm going to say little r tot is equal to r over three. And so that's six over three. So that's two ohms. Okay, so uh, we have the EMF and we have the load resistance as well of six. What's the current in R, so just the total current, so we can say EMF is equal to, uh, well, we could go with V, but because we don't have the terminal PD, I'm just going to say IR plus IR. I'm going to have to factorize that, of course. So IR plus R, put that over the other side, R plus R. So therefore, I is equal to the EMF of 1.5 volts. They're in parallel, so it's just still 1.5 volts, divided by 6 plus and so that's 1.5 divided by 8. So that's oh, 0 0.75, 0 0.3, blah, blah, blah. I know it's going to be the smallest one there because it's going to be smaller than uh, 0 0.25, isn't it? So yeah, our answer is A. Okay, fine. The answer is uh, that in reality. So yeah, A is our answer. 20, part of a circuit. Okay. Uh, well, we know that we must have six amps going down here because of Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff's first law. What's the potential difference between point P and Earth? Okay, well, that's nice and easy. We just want the PD across both of these resistors. V equals IR, so that's 2 times 10, so that's 20 volts. And then here too, V is equal to, uh, what's that, 6 times 20 instead, so that's 120. So overall, the total PD is 140. The answer is D. 21. What graph shows how power dissipated varies with current? Well, we know that P is equal to I squared R. Now, we could have gone with VI, but the problem is, is that to increase I, you have to increase V. So we want a proportional relationship. So therefore, we have to have something with a constant in. So resistance is constant here. So, well, if it obeys Ohm's law. So therefore, P is proportional to I squared. So that should look like a Y equals X squared graph. So our answer is A. 22, uh, doubly charged ions. Okay. Ooh, so we know that this charge is going to be therefore 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, because if it was singly charged, it would just be 1E, but it's that, so let's just say that's 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay, how many ions pass a point in one minute? Uh, okay, so I'll tell you what, let's make up our own units. Whenever it comes to how many thingies kind of questions that we have, we can make up our own units. So we've got 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, per ion i'm going to just put that there and we know that we have 0 0.64 amps and so that's the same thing as 0 0.64 coulombs per second so therefore what can we do with these well we can say 0 0.64 coulombs per second because we know we want basically how many in a second first of all don't we and divide that by 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs per ion coulombs cancel Ions end up on top, and we'll end up with ions per second. So 0 0.64 divided by 3.2 times 10 minus 19. And that gives me, oh, I could have done that in my head, couldn't I? Of course. So that gives me 2 times 10 to the 18 ions per second. But we want how many in a minute? So just times that by 60. I definitely can do that in my head. So that's going to be 120 times 10 to the 18. Or in other words, 1.2 times 10 to the 20 ions in a minute. So the answer looks like it's going to be C. 23, we have a mobile phone of that power. We have a voltage and we have a charge. What is the time taken for the battery to discharge completely? Well, there's a couple of ways that we can do this actually, but let's go with uh, current, shall we? Let's find current from power and voltage. So P is equal to IV, therefore I is equal to P divided by V. 
So that is 200 milliwatts, so that's just 0 0.2 watts, divided by 3.7, and it gives me 0 0.054 amps. And then we have a charge, so we know that current is charge divided by time. We're looking for time, so let's just swap these two rounds. Time is equal to charge divided by current. So that's going to be our 9,400 coulombs divided by 0 0.054 amps. And that gives me 174,000 seconds. We're looking for hours, of course, so let's divide that by 3,600. And that gives me 48 hours. Boom. The answer is B. 24, we have two resistors equal length, same conducting putty. Okay, so I'll tell you what, let's crack out the equation already. So rho is equal to R A. Oh, I'll tell you what, I probably should have written the, the other way around. R is equal to rho L over A. Okay, so what is staying the same? Well, rho is the same because it's the same material and they're the same length. Uh, but the diameter, so similar to earlier, uh, we can say resistance is inversely proportional to A, so that's inversely proportional to D squared. And so therefore, if the diameter is double for Y, that means that D squared times by four, so therefore resistance goes down by a factor of four. So we could say that the, oh, I've got it the wrong way around, haven't I? Dun, 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 okay. Uh, so actually, well, okay, it, it's fine. It just means that this one is going to be R, but x is going to be, well, four times greater, isn't it? So there we go. It, they've just cut the numbers the other way around. That's fine. So therefore, we know just adding these together, it's going to be 5R. The answer is D. The combined resistance of N identical resistance in parallel is Rn, which statement correctly describes the variation of Rn as N decreases. Okay. Rn decreases as n increases well okay we know rn isn't going to increase as n increases because we know as we add more resistors in parallel we are giving the current more options as it were so therefore total resistance is going to go down so it can't be c can't be d uh, it increases non-linearly of course because uh, we know that 1 over r total is equal to 1 over r1, and then we add 1 over r2, etc. Um, so essentially, it's going to be equal to n over r. So therefore, well, this is rn, isn't it? So therefore, if r is staying the same, then we can say that rn is inversely proportional to n. So therefore, yes, it's decreasing non-linearly. 26. Resistivity, blah, 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 blah. The resistance of that. What is the total resistance when they're connected in parallel? Okay, so we have that and we have that. Okay, so uh, we want first of all the equation. So resistance is equal to rho L over A. So what's Q going to be like compared to P? So it's going to be, well, let's divide by four. And L is the same, so that's fine. And then A is halved, so therefore that's the same thing as times by two on top. So divide by four times by two, so therefore the whole thing is halved. So therefore we can say that P is R, whereas Q is R over two. So therefore one over R total is equal to one over R plus one over R over two, or in other words, that's the same thing as 1 over r plus 2 over r. And that's the same thing, of course, as 3 over r. Therefore, r total is equal to r over 3. So our answer is b. 27, we have an EMF, no internal resistance. Fine. What's the reading on the voltmeter connected between x and y? So if you have a voltmeter there, what is the potential difference? So we need to think about potential. So the potential here is zero volts. The potential here is plus 12 volts. So therefore, the potential here is 12 volts. Potential here is 12 volts as well. I don't need the plus. You get the idea. Potential down here is zero volts and zero volts. So therefore, what is the potential at points X and Y? Well, two and one is the resistances on the first branch here. So therefore, uh, we know that it's going to be eight volts across here and four volts across here. That's how the 12 volts is going to get split up, two to one. Therefore, the potential here is going to be four volts. On the right-hand side, it's three and one. So it's going to be nine volts across here and three volts across here. So therefore, the 
potential here is 3 volts. Therefore, what's the potential difference? It's 1 volt. The answer is B. 28, we have an EMF 1.5 and R 0 0.6 ohms. Which combination will deliver 1.5 volts? It's not going to be this one, is it? Because uh, that will give us 4.5 volts, because they're all in the same direction. This one here, yeah, 1.5 volts. But then this one's minus 1.5 volts, because it's pointing in the opposite direction. So this will give us 1.5 volts, yes. Uh, a maximum current of 7.5 amps. Ugh, okay, so V equals I R. So therefore, I is equal to V over R. So let's check that. So 1.5 divided by, well, 0 0.6 times 3. So in other words, 1.5 divided by 1.8. And that's definitely not going to give us 7.5 amps, is it? So it's not going to be that one. So let's look at these then. Um, well, they can't be C because this is going to be 1.5 volts, but then 1.5 volts for these two. So that's actually going to be 3 volts. So that doesn't give us the right EMF. So it looks like it's going to be D. Let's just check. Yes, they're all in parallel. So therefore, it's going to dish out 1.5 volts. But they're all in parallel. So therefore, the resistance, like we saw earlier, the total internal resistance for all three is just going to be R over 3. So that is 0 0.6 over 3. So that is 0 0.2 ohms. So V equals IR, like we saw. So therefore, I is going to be equal to V over R. So that's 1.5 divided by 0 0.2. And yes, that's going to be basically 1.5 times 5. And that does give us 7.5 amps. So D is our answer. 29, which graph shows a variation of resistance with temperature for a thermistor? NTC, negative temperature coefficient, that's the only thermistor we deal with. It's a bit redundant, the NTC is. So as temperature goes up, resistance goes up. No, it's the opposite, isn't it? And is it going to be C or D? Well, it doesn't decrease linearly because that implies that it goes down to resistance of zero. It has to be C. 30, we have an LDR circuit. Which row shows how the readings on the amateur and voltmeter change when the light increases? Okay, so if light increases, then that means that the resistance of the LDR will go down. So we had a question like this earlier, but with a the thermistor, didn't we? So if the resistance of the LDR goes down, then therefore its share of the voltage also goes down. So therefore it cannot be A and it cannot be C. But if the resistance goes down, then therefore the total resistance also goes down. So therefore the current goes up. So the answer, I think, is D. We have a circuit with a diode. Okay. The PD across there is 1.8 volts. Okay. Uh, the current in the circuit is that. What is the value of resistor? Ah. Okay. That should be fairly easy. So EMF is equal to uh, IR plus IR, but uh, we're going to factorize that because we want R, don't we? So I times R plus R. So therefore, we can say that R plus R is equal to the EMF over the current, or in other words, the load resistance. That's all of this here, of course, is equal to that take away the internal resistance. So that's going to be, uh, was that 5 volts divided by 20 milliamps? I'm just going to say 0 0.02 minus, uh, what was it? 10 ohms. So in other words, that's 5 times 50. So that's 250 take away 10. So that gives us 240 ohms. And so, oh gosh, okay, right. So uh, I guess we should find out the resistance of this as well. There's a couple of ways you can do this, of course. So R is equal to V over I. That's just Simon's law. So that's just 1.8 volts divided by it was 0 0.02. So we're getting times by 50. So the resistance of the LDR is going to be 90 ohms. So therefore, if all together, this is 240 ohms, but the LDR is 90, therefore R, this R here is going to be equal to 240, take away 90. So that gives us 150 ohms. So our answer is C. So we have V and I for something. What is the resistance? Ah, they're trying to catch us out. Yes, it's a common misconception 
So we know that the gradient of a VI graph, in this case, gives us an indication of what's happening to the resistance, doesn't it? And so as we have an increasing gradient, we have an increasing resistance, but the gradient is not equal to the resistance. And that's a common misconception. So you can forget about this tangent. You can forget about all that. All we care about is this point here. What's the current? What's the voltage? U Ohm's law, V equals IR. So therefore, R is equal to V over I. So it's going to be V2 over I2. The answer is C. Trick question, but I guarantee there's a lot of people out there who would have got that wrong because they would have been taught the wrong thing. We have a thermistor and a resistor. What are we being asked? Which row describes what happens to the current in each amateur when the temperature of the thermistor decreases? Okay, so when the temp goes down, the resistance goes up. Fine. So, uh, well, first things first, we know A2 isn't going to change, is it? Because we know nothing in that branch is changing. So therefore, A2 is going to be unchanged. So it can't be B and it can't be C. What about A1 though? If R increases, if the resistance of the thermistor increases, then that means its current goes down. So A1 is going to decrease. The answer is A. It's a pretty nice question. 34, we have two batteries. Again, internal resistance of 1.6 ohms. So therefore, we can already see that this is going to be half that. So 0 0.8 ohms. So that's what our internal resistance is for both of these combined. Okay, um, what have we been asked? What's the current in the circuit, essentially? Easy peasy. Uh, was it 1.5 volts? EMF is equal to, let's just factorize it straight off, I times R plus R. Therefore, current is equal to the EMF divided by the total resistance. And so that's 1.5 divided by uh, 2.4 plus 0 0.8, or in other words, 1.5 divided by 3.2. I think that's going to be just under 0 0.5. So I think the answer is B. And sure enough, it is. It's 0 0.47 amps. So there you go. Hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more of these questions, then click on the card and it'll take you to the playlist. Of course, you can always visit physicsandmasstutor.com in order to find more questions like this on the website. Thanks for watching. See you next time.